If you're not careful, your plants could get spider mites, fungus gnats, aphids, thrips, powdery mildew, or bud rot. But I'm gonna show you how to avoid all of that. Welcome back to the Strange Show Beginner's Grow Guide. If you're new here, my name is Matt, and I'm just a goofy stoner who teaches you things about cannabis. I work in Colorado's legal cannabis industry as a grower, and today we're gonna learn how to avoid pests and diseases in our garden. And preventing all of these problems is much easier to do than trying to get rid of all of them later. And it's really not that hard to avoid this stuff as long as we follow the right steps. So before we get in too deep, let's look at some beginner mistakes that could make it much more likely that we're going to get pests or diseases. Number one is not starting with healthy seeds or clones. And this is especially important if you're getting clones from somewhere because if you get clones with a disease or with some bugs on them, you're just going to bring them home to your garden. And even if you're growing from seed, if you're using a seed that you don't know where it came from and you don't know anything about these seeds or where these genetics came from, maybe these genetics are just more likely to get mold or mildew. You would never know because you don't know anything about your seeds. But by this point, you've probably already planted your seeds and you just have the plants you have, but there's still some more things we can do. And the next one is just keeping your grow space really clean. Regularly clean your grow space, including your equipment and your tools to prevent the buildup of bacteria, fungus, or bugs. This can be done by wiping down the surfaces with a disinfectant solution, vacuuming or sweeping the floor, and just washing your hands before you handle the plants. Anything you can do to keep your grow space clean is always a good idea, so just clean up things whenever you have the chance. Don't let your spilled dirt or your old leaves just lay around on the floor because bugs love that kind of thing. And also be careful for cross-contamination. Like if you know someone else who is growing plants and you're checking out their plants, don't go straight home to your garden with all your same clothes on. Or if you have plants outside, don't go mess with your plants that are outside and then come inside and mess with your indoor garden. Because if there's bugs on some of these other plants, you're probably going to get them on your clothes and then come inside and give them right to your plants. And even if you're around other plants that aren't cannabis plants, you're just like out in the forest or whatever, brushing up against all kinds of other plants, you don't know what kinds of diseases, like plant diseases or maybe bugs or whatever you got on your sleeves when you're walking through everything and then you come home and you're just going to put it all over your plants. And if you happen to work in a grow room like me, this is going to be even worse because you're around a ton of cannabis plants all day. So what I do with my work clothes is I go into the garage and then put all of my work clothes into a garbage bag. Then I bring that garbage bag straight to the laundry room and I don't open it until I'm ready to wash those clothes. And I make sure I don't get anywhere near my garden with my work clothes on that I was rubbing against all those other plants with. Because if those plants have something, I don't want to bring it home to my garden. Another thing you can do is just keep a good eye on your garden. You're probably going to be looking at your plants every day anyway, so just make sure sure you look out for any changes. You might see yellowing or wilted leaves. You could see little spots or dots, maybe little spots of necrosis. In a worst case scenario, you might see something like spider mite webs. And when you notice these pests or pathogens early, it's really easy for you to just grab them and remove them from the room. So hopefully it doesn't spread to any of your other plants. After the tips we're about to cover, you'll probably never get to that point, but it's good to always just keep an eye on your plants anyways. You also want to make sure you're not overwatering your plants. You need to make sure your roots have time to dry out a little bit at least before you go and soak them with water again. If the roots are always soaked in water, then they can get all kinds of nasty fungus and bacteria down in your roots where you might not even see it. And you might not even know that your plant was unhealthy if it just had a root fungus. Because you might just think that's the way it grows, but little did you know, if it didn't have that root fungus, it would be doing a lot better. And the last one of these steps is just make sure that you're keeping a good humidity in your grow tent. There's different humidity ranges for each stage of growth, but you want to make sure that you're never letting your tent stay way too humid. Because these high humidity levels are going to make it way more likely that you're going to get something nasty like a bud rot or a powdery mildew. And to avoid that, just make sure that you have good air movement through your canopy with your moving fan and that you have good air exchange in your tent with your exhaust fan. You want to make sure that on a regular basis, you're taking that old stale humid air out of your tent and replacing it with new fresh air. But that's just the basic steps. So assuming you're already keeping your grow room clean and you're keeping the humidity in the right ranges, now we can talk about setting up our IPM schedule. And just as a reminder, this is the Mandarin Sunset. We're growing this under a Spider Farmer SE7000 730 watt LED. This thing is really bright. It's giving me great buds. And we have this all hooked up to the Spider Farmer Smart Exhaust System. Shout out to Spider Farmer. 
IPM stands for Integrated Pest Management, and if you work in a legal grow room, you have definitely heard of this term before. Because in the cannabis industry, IPM teams are really important because they ensure the quality and safety of the crop while reducing the need for constant pesticide applications. And I've worked in a good amount of different legal grow rooms, and in almost every one of them, the IPM team is a totally different job than the growers. So we'll grow the plants, but we don't do any of the pesticides or anything. That's a whole different team. The IPM team has different training, they have to get certifications from the state, and they usually get paid a good bit more too. Because that job sort of sucks, you're like in coveralls and you're spraying pesticides and you got a respirator on all day. But it doesn't have to suck for you at home, it can actually be very easy if you just follow these steps. So before we get into our IPM schedule, let's talk about these little bastards. These are fungus gnats, and a lot of growers will experience them in their garden. These will usually come around when you water too often because they like to lay their larva in the top of your wet soil. So the number one thing you can do to prevent fungus gnats is just let your soil dry out before you water it again. But if you get a bad infestation of gnats, it can take a while of good watering before you can get them to go away. So one really easy and chemical free way to kill a lot of them is just get these little yellow sticky cards. Just stick these in your pots and every gnat that lands on that will die. But if your gnats get really bad, you can use diatomaceous earth. This is a white powder that is made from crushed up diatoms in the ground and it's harmless to your plants and to you, but it is really, really sharp at a microscopic level. So if you just sprinkle a little bit of this powder on the surface of your soil, any of the gnats that try to land on the soil are going to get covered in this dust and cut to shreds. But gnats are pretty easy to get rid of, and they're probably not going to cause much damage to your plants, so let's see what's next. For our main defense against all bugs and diseases on our plants, we're just going to spray all natural plant oils all over our garden. And for this, it's best to grab a small pump sprayer like this to help us spray them. Could use a little spray bottle, but these sort of suck, especially if you have a lot of plants. My favorite pesticides and fungicides are just natural plant oils like neem oil and peppermint oil and clove oil, which can all work really well if you use them the right way. Neem oil works by creating an unfavorable environment for pests rather than just killing them. It prevents bugs from feeding, it affects their ability to grow or lay eggs, and it reduces their population over time. Neem oil is particularly effective against soft-bodied insects like aphids, spider mites, and white flies, which are common pests for cannabis plants. It also works against other stuff like mealybugs, thrips, and leaf miners. Neem oil is also a great fungicide and is effective against a wide range of fungal diseases that can affect cannabis plants. It helps to control and prevent the growth of mildew, rust, and other fungal diseases that can screw your plants up. Neem oil even works against bacterial infections, and you can sort of use it as like an all-around plant health juice. It's tight stuff, and it's just a plant oil. I like this neem oil right here. It's called Captain Jack's Neem Max. You can find this stuff all over the place. I actually picked this up at like Home Depot or Lowe's. But any pure neem oil will work, as long as it's just plain pure neem oil. But we can't use the same neem oil all the time, or the bugs are just going to get used to it. We got to switch it up a little bit. Pests can build up resistance to natural oils over time, so it's important to rotate your sprays regularly. So it's best to use different natural oils, like clove oil spray to prevent pests from becoming resistant. And one I really like for this is from a brand called Athena, and it's just called IPM. And all this is is citric acid, peppermint oil, lemongrass oil, and geranium oil. So we have a two-part defense. I have the pure neem oil, and then I have the mix of all those other oils. So I'm never spraying the same oil back to back. So if there were some bugs around, I'm always hitting them with new stuff that they hate all the time. So it's much harder for them to build up resistance. And to prevent problems like diseases and bugs, we're gonna wanna spray our plants every seven days. And we're gonna switch between a different oil each time. So the first week you would spray with the neem oil, then the next week you would spray with the peppermint oil. Then you go back to the neem oil and then back to the peppermint oil. You just do a different spray every week. But we need to be specific with how we spray. First, the bottle will have a recommended mix rate for preventative use. Make sure to follow this mixing ratio. And if you have the space, it's nice to be able to move your plants out of the grow tent while you spray, because this stuff sort of stinks. You also don't want your plant to be underneath the really bright grow lights when you spray these oils on your plant. If your plant is underneath the grow light when you spray the oils on it, it's going to burn the leaves. Also, don't spray your plants that look like this at all. If your plants already have buds on them and then you spray them with oil, you're just going to end up smoking that oil. So you need to stop spraying these oils at least a month before harvest. So when you first switch your lights and your plants start showing their signs of flowering, this is a good time to stop your sprays. So it's 
it's going to be important that we take care of our plants up until this point because after now they're going to be vulnerable. So we're gonna to need to either have the grow light turned off or we're gonna to need to have our plants moved away from the grow light for at least four hours. So I like to just take all of my plants out to the garage to spray them. It's also a good idea to suit up in some protective gear like some gloves and some long sleeves, cover your dreadlocks, wear a mask, some glasses. You don't wanna get this stuff all over you because it's very concentrated, potent oils that some people have a strong allergic reaction to. So suit up for safety. So when you get your oil mixed up with the water really nice in your pump sprayer, make sure you spray the top of your plants until you get all of the leaves saturated. You might have to spread your plant out a little bit so you can really get in there, you know, and spray the tops of all the leaves. But the tops of the leaves aren't really the most important part here. What we really need to go for is the bottom of the leaves because when bugs show up, they love to go to the bottom of your leaves because in nature, that's where they would hang out to stay safe from like rain and predators. So after you spray the top, you need to spray upwards from the bottom and come through your plant like this. Start at the bottom and go all the way up to the top, making sure you spray all of the bottoms of your leaves. Spraying the bottom of the leaf is the most important part when you're doing your IPM spray. I like to set my pump sprayer on a really, really fine mist so I can just get it up in the middle and really work it around and make sure I get all of the bottom of these leaves completely coated in this oil and water mix. And after you've coated the top and the bottom of all your leaves and you sprayed all the stems, go ahead and give the top of your soil a light spray too. That way if there's any weird stuff like a fungus or a bug or something hanging out in the top of your soil, spray it with this oil, nothing's gonna like that. And since I'm only growing a few plants at a time at home, I really like to spray these plants heavy because I'm trying to make sure every surface of every leaf is coated. So by the time I'm done spraying, these plants are really dripping wet. A lot of people might say that this is over spraying, but I would rather over spray than under spray. But since this is so drippy, I'll just give it a nice little shake to get all the extra drops off that I can. And when you're done spraying, make sure that you don't put your plants back under the bright grow lights for four hours. If you're not spraying your plants at night when the lights are supposed to be turned off, you can leave them under some light source. Like I'll leave mine sitting in my garage with just the regular garage lights on, but they're really far away and they're really dim. So it doesn't make the plants think it's nighttime, but it also isn't a bright enough light to burn the leaves. But if you put those oils on the top of the leaf and then put it right under that bright grow light, the oil is gonna act just sort of like a magnifying glass and it's gonna burn up your leaf. And another thing I like to do when I'm spraying my weed plants is I will spray my other house plants. I'll just take the other plants I have laying around my house, like that regular house plants, and I'll take them in the garage and spray them too. Because maybe just the normal plants in the other room had some pests or some pathogens or bugs on them that are gonna get in my clothes and go to my garden. So while I already have my stuff mixed up and got my pump sprayer out, I'll just go ahead and spray those too. And I won't spray all of the plants in the house every single time I spray the weed plants, but it's good to do it every once in a while. Especially if you're handling your house plants right before you come and handle your weed plants. Remember, if you're doing that, always like wash your hands and change your clothes. And make sure that you're regularly checking your plants to look for any like spots or diseases or mold or mildew or bugs or anything. You can like look underneath the leaves and look for little bug eggs or whatever. You can notice little spots on the top of the leaves sometimes if you have bugs. And as long as you keep everything nice and clean, you keep your tools clean, you keep your grow room clean, you're on your way to getting some nice huge yields. But you can turn a red regular yield into a massive yield with one really easy trick called topping. And we're going to cover all of that in this video. This video is going to show you how just a few strategically placed little cuts on your plant can double or triple or maybe even quadruple your yields. This is one of the very easiest ways to get massive growth in your plant. So make sure you watch this. I'll see you there. Peace.